uh, stock of the day. Um, of course, it is earning season and uh, it is confession time. Uh, truth or dare, City Chic, uh, the retailer, out today with a trading update forecasting sales revenue to take a near 30% dive in the first half as customers pull back on spending in the face of higher interest rates and a cost of living crisis. Uh, Phil Ryan, the chief executive, however optimistic, saying the economy is on track to return to profitability of the company in the second half of the year on the back of uh, uh, the economy. The company also responded to recent media speculation regarding potential interest in its North American business, saying there is no certainty any opportunities, including any potential sale of the business, will proceed to a binding transaction. So, uh, you know, we've been talking about retailers for a, he- for a while here on the call, how they are responding to uh, uh, consumers and, and falling like on like at retail sales. Um, 500,000 new migrant customers over last year would have helped the retailers. But uh, Rudy, what do you think of the update from City Sheet? Oh, where do I start? Let's let's keep it uh, condensed and succinct. Um, <clears throat> this is clearly, and that's already been, been established, a company in trouble. I mean, mm. uh, this is supersized fashion for for women. Um, at some stage, that seemed to be all going correctly. It, it, it went smoothly. They had customers that really loved the business because they could they could find garments they couldn't find out anywhere else. Yep. And of course, that story has... They found a real niche for themselves, didn't they? They're not the only one, but they are the the only one on the ASX. And at some stage, as you can tell there, that story became unstuck. Mm. Uh, Maybe the wrong acquisitions, uh, too much debt, uh, inventory they got stuck with. Uh, All of a sudden, uh, whatever there was in profits uh, turned into losses. And they still haven't been able to... What, What they have done so far is they're shrinking. So they're essentially shrinking the business and some intelligent people at one stage said, you can't shrink into greatness. Right. Um, so yes, at some stage, they, they might get their margins stabilized and they might uh, start uh, reporting a, a, an accountancy profit, but it's horses for courses. You have to know what your strategy and your risk appetite is in, 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 in the share market. For me, these struggling bottom of the barrel stories, they never appeal. Um, I know there's, I mean, there's at least one fund manager last year who completely uh, realigned his portfolio into uh, potential takeover targets, and he has done really, really well. Right. If you can do that, by all means, I mean, go right. for it. He's obviously been very, very good for his, for his, for his clientele. For me, that's, that's maybe the cherry on the cake you can take on. I mean, Sometimes one of my stocks in the portfolio gets a takeover offer. Doesn't happen yeah. very often. Yeah. Um, I mean, you never say no, but to specifically go for such companies, to specifically aim for companies that <coughs> basically are in trouble, and then in the hope that they, they that, that the news becomes better at some stage, yeah. so it not turns out not as bad. It's not my personal strategy, but and see, I don't feel comfortable with that. But see, we have great retailers in this country. A yeah, lot this of is not them one of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of them have done well. Yes, so this, this is not that, that's that's. See, if I have the the, the, the choice between going for for a, a robust quality performer or one that is struggling, I always will go for the for the yeah. first option. I mean, yeah, yeah. On the premise that it's not overly overly valued, but. Right. If it's even if it's reasonably valid, I would still have the preference for the one that performs. Yeah. yeah. Instead of having to go for the one that def- desperately needs yeah. a turnout or turnaround successfully executed. Usually, yeah. the, the, the the execution of the turnarounds usually takes much longer than people expect. And the other thing to add, of course, is there's still question marks over consumer spending this year and over the economy mm. this year. If the economy decelerates, even if it's only the first six months of the year. It makes turnaround stories like for City Chic even more difficult. Yeah. Yep. So for me, it's a uh, it's a barge pole, and uh, good luck with other other people making money out of it. Right. Okay. So uh, because because that that's the thing as I mentioned before, a lot of retail stocks um, or retail sales have been buoyed by massive immigration last year. Yeah. That's potentially being cut back. International student visas cut back. Uh, it's it's, also, safety it's, net it's also this company is, is, is obviously, I mean, they're shrinking, but they, they're still outside of Australia. So it's more yeah. than just an Australian story as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's becoming less outside of Australia. <laughs> because too, they're because shrinking. They sold, well, they sold a European business yes. Uh, yes. 
I don't know, was it early last year or the yeah, year before? Yeah, and I think, I think they closed and down the Asian one, I think. Y yeah, and, and that was a loss-making business as well. So um, you look at the announcement this morning and you, you look at it and you say, well, yeah, the, the, the sales numbers and revenue numbers are awful. They're yeah. falling. Um, and they're uh, announcing that, no, there's no takeover um, of the US business um, in the wings. Well, and the shares popped. Shares popped 20%. But yeah. look, where the smoke this fire? Why I think, I think the, market, the market sort of looks at that and goes, you know, when, you know it's a bit like, you know, we're going to say there's no one acquiring any business until they are acquiring the business, which right. probably means there's someone sniffing around anyway right. if there's, if there's rumours about it, you know, out there. Um, I'm with Rudy, I don't buy a stock just for the sake of a takeover. I mean, there are people out there in the investment world that do that, looking yeah. at companies that are prime sort of break up targets or, or, or takeover targets. Um, I'm not necessarily in that boat, but I, I think, you know, a 20% jump on the back of revenue declining. Um, and, you, you know, when is revenue going to turn around for these guys? Yeah. Yeah. We've gone through sort of COVID pandemic and everyone's expecting retail to decline, but it actually increased because people were sitting around and they had nothing to do except sit online and, and, and you know, shop. Yeah. You know, and, and, and there was you know, companies like JB Hi-Fi did extremely well. Don't put them in this category. I think yeah. JB Hi-Fi is great. Yeah. I think they're a great retailer. Um, yeah. Whereas this one, you know, well, a lot of demand may have been brought forward into those consumer mm. periods where people have bought their clothing for a number of years you know I'm not sure how fashions play into that I'm not a, as you can see yeah. fashionable sort of person <laughs> <laughs> unlike my friend Rudy over here um, but but um, he's the Italian <laughs> <laughs> um, but but look um, you know if they do sell off the US business I don't know how much of that is a loss making as well because if you sell off loss making businesses um, obviously, hopefully, th what you have left over might be profitable, but our analysts don't have them making a profit for another two years. Oh, so, right, okay. so I wouldn't be buying it. Uh, yeah, yep. And it's pop 20%. Are you buying it for what? Yep. You know, a potential takeover? Well, how much more is in it? Uh, yep. I don't know. So, um, you know, I'd, you know if, if I owned it now, I'd probably take advantage of the 20% and move on and look for something else. Oh, so Even if you're it. in a loss, you know, take So you'd loss. sell it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, which. You know, when a stock disappoints, they uh, the tradition over the last couple of weeks it's been absolutely hammered. The fact that this one's disappointed and gone up means people didn't have very high expectations. <laughs> and, and, and I bet you the same the same applies to Bepco as well, which has something similar happening. I bet right. you they were expecting worse. Yeah. I'm not so sure whether that's that's actually good news. Right. Know? Right. Yep. Exactly. All right.